Viruses are too small to be detected directly, except by electron microscopy. Even for this to be possible, highly concentrated preparations of virus particles are required. Indirect laboratory methods are therefore necessary for the study and quantitation of viruses. These can be divided into methods involving virus propagation in the laboratory and subsequent detection via the cytotoxic effects they have on host cells, detection of virus proteins by using specific antibodies, also known as the urology, and detection of virus DNA or RNA by molecular methods such as hybridization or amplification using specific primers. These different kinds of methods are frequently combined for specific purposes. Now we will look into some of the most common techniques currently used in virology labs. Living host cells are required for virus replication. For reasons of cost and convenience, cultured cells growing in monolayers in dishes, flasks or bottles are the most used. For some more fastidious viruses, organ culture or even whole animals are needed. Cell culture not only makes it possible to produce large numbers of virus particles, the technique also forms the basis for the biochemical and cell biological analysis of the viral life cycle inside the infected cell. Furthermore, infected cell cultures are used to study and isolate the nucleic acid and proteins that viruses produce during the replication. Many different viruses can be propagated in cultured cells and even previously unknown viruses can be discovered. For all these reasons, cell culture is used extensively in both research and diagnostics. But the technique also has its disadvantages. Viruses can change in cell culture and adapt to the laboratory conditions under which they are propagated. This results in the selection of virus mutants that propagate better in cell culture. As a result, we don't necessarily get a correct image of all the properties of a virus. Another important limitation is the fact that not all viruses propagate in cell culture. The replication of viruses in cultured cells can often be detected by comparing the infected and ultimately dead cells with the normal ones. This is the so-called cytopathic effect and it can be used to detect and quantitate virus infectivity in a plaque assay. In this technique, serial dilutions of virus are used to infect a monolayer. If a higher dilution is applied, statistically a cell will only be infected by a single virus particle. Then a semi-solid overlay is applied to retain the spread of progeny virus from this single infected cell and thus prevent widespread infection of the cell monolayer. Instead, the viruses produced from the single infected cell will only spread to directly adjacent cells. The result will be a small cluster of infected and eventually dead cells referred to as a plaque. Plaques may be readily visible under certain illumination conditions or may be made apparent by staining living cells so that the dead virus infected cells in the plaque become obvious. Plaques can also be stained using virus specific antibodies. Many currently used diagnostic and research methods use specific antibodies to detect viral antigens. Antibodies that bind to the viral antigens carry some kind of label, stain or trace which can be readily detected by its fluorescence, radioactivity or enzyme activity. Often indirect assays are used where virus specific antibodies bound to their target protein are in turn used as the target for a labelled secondary antibody. These procedures allow the detection, identification and study of viral proteins in infected cells and tissues. 
One such procedure is immunofluorescence microscopy. It enables the study of viral replication processes in terms of their location within the cell and the timing of viral protein synthesis. In this method, fluorescence-labeled antibodies are used. Inside single cells or tissue sections, antibodies can accurately locate their target molecules in the various compartments and organelles. Often other antibodies which bind to specific cellular structures such as the endoplasmic reticulum are used at the same time. These antibodies are labelled with a different fluorescent group, emitting light of a different colour. As antibodies recognise surface features of proteins, it's important to preserve the native structure of these proteins. This is usually achieved by fixing the infected cells using a relatively mild chemical procedure. After the labelling procedure is complete, the fixed samples can be viewed under the microscope. The image reveals information regarding the localization of the antigen in the cell. Since the invention of highly efficient methods for the amplification of nucleic acid sequences, almost all aspects of molecular virology have been revolutionized. In particular, powerful molecular-based methods can be applied to viruses which are difficult or impossible to amplify in cell culture. Similarly, clinical samples containing extremely small numbers of viruses can turn into large amounts of material and information. The most widely used amplification technique is the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. This technique has revolutionized experimental approaches in biochemistry, molecular biology, diagnostic microbiology and forensics. The technique depends on the use of two oligonucleotide primers, complementary to opposite ends of the target DNA sequence. The target DNA is heated to separate the complementary strands and cooled to allow binding of the primer oligonucleotides to the target. The primers are then elongated using a thermostable DNA polymerase derived from a thermophilic bacterial species. The best known of these is TAC DNA polymerase. This was the first enzyme discovered that could survive the DNA heat denaturation step at 96 degrees Celsius, thus making it unnecessary to add new enzyme during each cycle. The reaction takes place in a thermocycler that can rapidly heat and cool the samples. The cycle of strand separation by heating, primer annealing and subsequent DNA synthesis is repeated many times until significant quantities of the product DNA have been generated. The thermostability of the polymerase was critical in making the method robust and amenable to automation. The method can also be applied to RNA targets. This is possible with the incorporation of a preliminary step of reverse transcription. The process is then referred to as reverse transcriptase PCR, or RT-PCR for short. The PCR and the RT-PCR processes have been rapidly exploited not only by research labs, but also by diagnostic virology laboratories in order to provide unprecedented speed and precision. More recently, real-time PCR techniques have been developed to allow for further automation, speed and specificity.